and we're off to the races. Hey everyone and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host Chef AJ and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today we have Vicki Brettgock back on the show. She is a fabulous plant-based chef. She's been on many times. If you haven't caught her episode for a Christmas, which was I guess it was last year. My, my time is all messed up. When you go live every day, every day is the same. <laughs> but uh, she did a Christmas dinner and then she repurposed it the next day. It was just brilliant. She's part of the Ultimate Vegan Health and Weight Loss Bundle. She's going to tell you all about her fabulous offering. And she's going to be demonstrating spicy or smoky spiced beans, not spicy smoked beans, five ways. Please welcome Vicki to the show. Thank you so much. It's so great to be with you, Chef AJ. I'm so happy to have a chance to demonstrate these easy but delicious and very flavorful beans in different ways that I like to use them. And also talk a little bit about the bundle because this is such a, an amazing opportunity for people to uh, be having these amazing resources. There's sort of a sense of urgency about this because it's such a limited opportunity, only 10 days, right, all together. And there's only like two and a half days left. So it's really a matter of hours. So I just really hope that everyone listening will at least take a look at the bundle because it's amazing what's in there. Oh, $6,455.99 worth of retail uh, items um, for $49. It's kind of crazy. Um, so yeah. What a, what a value, right? It's what a value. Yeah. Every single item I think in the bundle is worth more than that $49 in itself. Right. I mean, you have a book, Chef AJ, that you have just released in the bundle. Eat your vegetables. Yeah. It's right? a course. It's a course that a I'm course. Pricing. Yeah. It's a course that I'm pricing at $97 called fall in love with vegetables. It's got 32 modules. It's over three hours of video. The ebook is 66 pages with like 56 recipes and uh, yeah so it's get it now operators are standing by what do get you it now have, yeah what do you have in the bundle so I'm really excited to be launching a new kind of mini course in this uh, bundle that I call plant-based meals all week so I created a series of videos I've got three 20-minute videos and 11 recipes that with a, an accompanying ebook that is in full color with recipes that I make in my own kitchen week after week. And it's got um, something for literally breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I call it next level batch cooking for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's plant-based meals all week, next level batch cooking. So what's I, to me a next level about it is it's not just a few items that you can eat during the week. It's things you can mix and match and something for breakfast. I've got a baked um, steel cut oats. I call purple magic baked steel cut oats that bakes in the oven, a big casserole full of um, blueberries and cherries. It all turns purple. So I call it purple magic. So you've got something for breakfast or maybe later for a snack. I've got a, a pot of soup that you can make either on the stove or in your instant pot. That's a red lentil black bean soup tempeh bean burgers so you can be baking burgers that you can have today and tomorrow and also stick some in the freezer it makes 12 different burgers mashed potatoes black and brown rice so a combination roasted vegetables and oven roasted ratatouille um, the beans i'm making today um, a perfect cheese sauce which is something i love to use and uh, salads in jars and buttermilk ranch dressing, and then a no-bake fudge bar dessert as well. So all these things, something for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, if you know, and dessert. So um, for me, I, I feel like all of these things, having some uh, dressing you can put on your salad and a sauce you can put over potatoes or pasta um, makes it next level. So it's something that can kind of satisfy everyone in the family for every meal really all week long. And there's more recipes than you probably want to make at one time. Most people don't want to make um, 11 recipes all at once on a weekend or any day during the week. You may not need that many, but just a few of them. If you make two or three of them, you'll have enough for a couple of days and you can always make something else midweek as you're ready for some new flavors as well. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this because these are recipes I use all the time myself. And this is the little ebook that goes with it. I actually spilled water on this today as I was preparing to get everything moving around. So it's a little bit wrinkly today, but 
a little better for wear, I think. So we're going to start with my beans recipe, and then I'm going to show you what I like to do with them, because I feel like almost all of these things that at least are part of my um, my plant-based meals all week are definitely things you can use in different ways, depending on how you like to, you know, mix and match your flavors. So I'm going to put just this, um, my onions on to um, saute. And I've gotten a head start. I've gotten them a little bit golden, but we're going to add them back to the pan and just get them hot. And then as they get hot, I'll have um, a chance to add our garlic to it as well. So what I like about all of these recipes, in addition that, to the fact that the flavors are really nice to mix and match um, as you build different kinds of meals, but also they're really easy. And to me, that's kind of the key to making eating in a healthy way sustainable because lots of us are busy all day long, even those of us that love to cook and not everyone loves to cook. I do, but I don't have time for it every day. So I like to have things that are quick enough that even if I didn't do a lot of planning ahead, I can put together in just a few minutes. And that's where these beans come in. Even if you didn't plan anything all day, now it's time to have dinner. Um, I'll show you a couple of different ideas. So um, I'm going to start with, and again, not a lot of ingredients, all very simple things. I'm putting together um, the, um, in my pan here an onion that I'm sauteing in water. And I'm just going to get it kind of golden. It's just about there because I gave it a little bit of a head start. And, you know, something, one of the contributors to the bundle is Kathy Hester. And she, I had a chance to talk to her a couple of days ago. She was saying that one of her tricks that she likes to do with onions is to make several onions all at once for the week. So she'll saute several of them or put them into her slow cooker and cook them all so that they're ready. So shout out to Kathy Hester. Um, she likes to, I think that's a great idea to just prep your onions so that you have one less step. I don't usually think ahead far enough to do that, but I love that idea. I have occasionally put a whole bunch of them into a slow cooker and cook them long enough to have ready for the whole week, but that I think is, um, that takes uh, extra brownie points for that one. You know, so, um, you mentioned that because um, I'm, I, I actually learned that tip a long time ago from Chef Darshana Thacker of Forks Over Knives when yes. I interviewed her for, it was either the Truth About Weight Loss Summit or the GI Summit. And I thought that is such a great idea. And even though I heard that years ago, have I done it? No, but it is a yeah. fabulous idea. It's a fabulous idea. And a variation of that is if you are making several things at once on a weekend, let's just say it's a Sunday, you're going to make a soup and some beans and maybe something else that involves onion or garlic, just at least chop those vegetables all at once. So you've got them ready to divide out and it's one step less to have to keep repeating. So um, it's so much quicker to chop two than start all over and get out the knife and, you know, get a clean board and all that. So I like that idea of prepping um, multiple items ahead. And similarly, I will say that in the video, and this is kind of something that I try to do when I batch cook, is use my time really well. I try to spend maybe about an hour, an hour and a half in the kitchen when I'm prepping, um, even no matter how many meals I'm making. So I like to be able to get in and out and do some other things. So I like to have some things passively cooking. So one of the keys, and this is something I show in the video, is to start with the item that you're cooking. Maybe it's a pot of soup that will take the longest. Get that going. Then maybe you put a whole batch of baked potatoes or sweet potatoes in the oven. Get that going. So things are happening simultaneously in different parts of the kitchen. Maybe you're making a sauce in the Vitamix. Maybe you've got some salads that you're prepping, some fresh salads. Maybe you've got something in a food processor, like a no-bake fudge bar that I have in here. So the idea is to kind of keep things moving. Maybe you've got something on the stove, like these onions. And so I'm going to turn that off. And so we've got our onions ready here. But that, I think that that's kind of important for those of us who are really, um, you know, have a busy schedule and maybe limited energy at the end of the day, not just time. So I've got my onions nice and golden. And of course, there's no oil. It's just all in water. And now that that is um, nice and kind of golden and soft, I'm going to add one chopped garlic clove to this and just toss this around on that heat. 
for, you know, about 30 seconds or so till I can um, just, you know, till it's fragrant and I can smell the, the garlic. So we'll just put that back on for a second here. And while that is just, I'll just give that a stir temporarily. This is a really easy recipe. So we'll just give that a stir for roughly half a minute or a minute, just till it smells nice and wonderful. And then we'll toss in our extra rest, our extra ingredients. So we're going to start with two cans of pinto beans. And you can really, again, use any bean you want here. This is pinto beans because I don't use pinto beans that often. I use a lot of black beans, a lot of chickpeas, kidney beans. And so I kind of developed this just because it's a different bean. And um, you can use navy beans, I've done that. In fact, I do like to mix. Uh, in fact, you can use two different kinds of beans in this recipe. So I'm just tossing this over the heat now. And then um, I'm going to add to that um, half of a cup of water because I drained and rinsed my beans. So I'm just adding in a little bit of liquid again. And then um, some tomato sauce, just a little jar of that. The recipe is in the show notes. So we just have like an eight ounce, little eight ounce can of tomato sauce, and then our seasonings. And that's where all the fun comes because now we've got our flavor. So I'm adding some smoked paprika, some chipotle powder, adobo seasoning, a dash of Cajun seasoning and some pepper and salt if you want to, otherwise just those other items and just stirring all of that in. And I'm going to bring it up to a little simmer. And we're just going to let this simmer away. Sometimes I put the top on, the lid on the pan and just let it simmer for a few minutes. In fact, that's maybe what we'll do while we're talking about the next step. How do you know though, you know, I'm curious when you do the pre onion thing, like how much to portion off to freeze, for example. So. What I would say with that would be probably pick, if you have, if you've made four onions, just you might want to divide them by eyeball, you know, into quarters and freeze them separately. I think most of the recipes I make usually call for one onion. So I would want to have a single onion, you know, kind of separated, or you could even break off pieces. I do know some people put small amounts of onion into like an ice cube tray so that they've always got something they can kind of grab out. But I tend to use a lot of onion at a time, like a large onion, probably about, I'm thinking a cup or a cup and a half of an onion. So I would just dividing how many you have into that many portions so that they're approximately equivalent. And you know how onions are different sizes and it always works. You know, you can kind of eyeball it, I would say, and they would, it would all be pretty close to good pretty close to great. So mm -hmm. I'm just bringing this up to a simmer and I'm gonna give it an occasional stir. It's already boiling, you know, kind of bubbling away a little bit. And I'm just gonna let it do its thing just like that for about two or three, four minutes, something like that, not very long. And then we'll just cut off the heat and we'll be ready to use it. And I've got five different ways I'm gonna show you that I like to use these beans literally for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now that doesn't mean I eat them literally every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but there's ideas here that you can use for any meal. And beans are such a nice way to get lots of fiber and um, you know, it's a really satisfying filling addition to a meal. So we're just about there. I'll see if I can lift this up to show you. Yeah, I think we're there. I'm going to just turn off the heat and unplug it so the fan doesn't get too loud and just show you that we've got this pan full of beans now. And they're really, really fragrant. They've got this lovely smoky smell and they're just ready to enjoy in all kinds of fun ways. So let's get started. What, what, so kind, first. Of, what kind of cool pot is that that you have? Oh, thank you for asking. I, this is actually made by Zabor. 
it's their noir collection and it's a ceramic pot and I really like it. It's very forgiving and nonstick. So I like this and I was using scan pans, which I also like, but this, my scan pans don't work on my induction burner and this does. So that's why this is what you are seeing today. And it's one of my favorite pans. So here we are, we're ready to show you how we're going to use our beans today. The first way is beans on toast, which is just such an easy way to have a breakfast that is kind of like they like to have in England. And it's as simple as just beans on an Ezekiel toasted muffin or any kind of bread or muffin of your choice. But nothing could be simpler than just beans on toast, just warming these beans up the next day and putting them on toast. And it's a great breakfast, very easy. So breakfast. Now we've got breakfast or lunch. And this is just a sweet potato that I put into the microwave for like five minutes. Yum. And now we're going to put. Now you're speaking my language, sweet potato. Yeah, that's right. And now we're just going to put some beans on top of a sweet potato. And we've got a great lunch and also a great dinner. So this is a great lunch or dinner, I think. In fact, breakfast too. So we've got two ways, obviously very easy here. And now for my third trick, we're going to do use a tortilla. So what I'm going to do is take an Ezekiel tortilla. I usually keep these, of course, in the freezer, but I pulled them out so that they would be soft enough to show you. Now this isn't toasted, but I do like to toast these or steam them. So that's what I would do with this. But just to show you how I'm going to pile things on, I'm going to just take a tortilla and I'm going to put over it some rice that I steamed in my rice cooker. And this is black and brown rice, half and half. And I've got Jill Newsom out to thank for that idea. I think this combination is just delicious and it's also very pretty, but it is kind of, to me, more flavorful than just plain rice, plain brown rice, I should say, which is my kind of my go-to normally, but this has become my new favorite. And so I love to just kind of pile up a bunch of brown and black rice. This is one of the recipes I have in my batch course. So we've got our rice here on our tortilla, and then we're just going to spoon some beans right over that. And now we've got rice and beans, and you can roll this into a burrito. But before I do, I'm just going to sprinkle it for beauty and a little bit of freshness with some lettuce. So we've got some shredded lettuce on top. And this is version number three, certainly a good breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We've got beans and a rice or on a tortilla. And now we're our version number three. I'm going to make a mashed potato bowl. And so again, I've got these mashed potatoes, which I love to have left over in my refrigerator. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna spoon my fluffy mashed potatoes, of course, made with no dairy or butter or anything gross. I'm just gonna have a bowl full of mashed potatoes here. And then I'm going to add some steamed broccoli because steamed broccoli is so great. So we'll just kind of fill it up with lots of, lots of broccoli, lots of broccoli, lots of potatoes, and then just a little spot for some beans. And so now we've got a lovely dinner, I'll say. So it could certainly be any meal again, but we've got our mashed potatoes, broccoli and beans, and I'm going to finish it off not that that wouldn't be just perfect because this is just delicious as it is with those three things together. It's one of my favorite go-to meals actually. But I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of my cheese sauce because this cheese sauce is so good over the beans, over the broccoli and over potatoes. And this cheese sauce is one of my go-tos that's also in my book. What, what is the base of your cheese sauce? 
I use cashews, but you can also substitute beans or just use oats or just leave them out and it's just a little thinner. And so now we've got this beautiful mashed potato bowl with the cheese sauce on it. And I think this is just a fabulous meal, right as it is. And now version number five. And that is a seven layer dip. Yum. I'm just gonna move this away. So if you wanted to, you could blend these beans, but I say, why bother? So we're just gonna put a layer of beans on the bottom. And then we're gonna layer some beet toppings on top. Let's see if we can make room here. Do you ever freeze them, just the bean part? You definitely could, but they usually don't last that long for me. Um, you could definitely make an extra batch of it and have, you know, or if you had more than you needed, you certainly could um, definitely freeze it. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't freeze great. Um, okay, so now we're going to just do some layering. So our next layer is going to be some yogurt. I'm using just an unsweetened almond milk yogurt made by Kite Hill. That's just a lovely kind of creamy topping here that's going to add um, that's going to be a nice foil to the spicy beans that we have in here. So we'll just spread some of that layer of the nice, you know, this is going to be a really great dip as we create this perfect for game day, um, which is coming up and you can layer things in any order. And this is just an approximate, one of the ideas I've got about how to do this, because you can really mix and match you know, olives and lettuce and tomatoes, whatever you like. I happen to have some avocado, mashed avocado I bought at Costco. It's just mashed avocado and lemon juice. This has salt and pepper. So for people who don't use salt, you might not want to use this, but it, I, I would definitely suggest using, you know, fresh avocado, but I just happened to have this and we bought it, this and froze them and found they froze really well. So I'm just going to add a layer of this mashed avocado because it's basically like a guacamole, but without any um, without much flavor addition, you know, it's just pretty plain with the lemon juice that helps to keep it from turning uh, dark. So we've got our mashed avocado. Let's see if I can lift this and show you what we've got so far. And then on top of that, we're going to add some salsa. In fact, maybe what we'll do is add a vegetable here. So now I've got some yellow peppers. I'll just add just a bunch of that on top. And you can see it's all really exactly how you like it. You can create any mixture you'd like. You could add roasted vegetables to this. Now I think we'll spoon some salsa over this. So we've got a nice layer of red that we've added. And now we're going to top that with you could put purple cabbage. I happen to have radicchio. So I love this kind of bitter shredded lettuce on top. The greens, I call it a green, even though it's red, but it's a um, beautiful leafy vegetable that is wonderful in salads with a beautiful kind of bitter flavor to it. And very tender. This is also good roasted. I love radicchio. And we're gonna top it with um, beautiful cilantro. And as I mentioned, you could, you know, kind of mix and match and use tomatoes and olives or any other kinds of things that you like. But we've got this beautiful layered dip now. And then I'm just gonna put it onto a plate and surround it with some crackers. So it's kind of like your version of like seven layer dip. Absolutely. And this would be perfect for Super Bowl, these crackers are actually oil-free. They're just made for, but with whole wheat, and which I don't usually eat, but we just happen to have these whole wheat and salt. Um, there's no oil or any other product you know, ingredient in it. So it's a pretty pure thing for those that eat gluten. So anyway, you can just kind of dip into this and have a lovely mixture. And we've got seven layer dip as well. Nice. So now we've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. But the only thing you didn't make a dessert with those beans. How dare you? <laughs> That's true. That's true. I did not. 
<laughs> so um, Carol says, lunch with Vicky sounds like so much fun. Why, why can't everybody just live near me? So, hey, here's a nice comment from -bum -bum, Infinite Love and Gratitude. I'm getting the bundle offers from literally everyone in it, but I'm definitely ordering mine from Chef Vicky. Well, her link is there. I'm sure she appreciates it. And remember, bundles make great gifts. We got Valentine's Day coming up. What could be better? Absolutely. It is really, truly the perfect gift for people you care about because it's who, what could you do better for those you love than help keep them healthy? So this from your heart to theirs with heart healthy, um, you know, all of these resources. And, you know, the interesting thing about this, I know sometimes people are saying, well, there's so much in here. I don't know if I would use all that amount. Well, the thing about this is there, even if you think you only want one or two things, I'm quite sure you're going to want to use much more, but whatever you use, I mean, you're, you're going to learn and get excited and have some new inspiration, find new people to, to learn from and follow. And um, it's just truly, you know, with two and a half days left, all of these experts have gotten together to contribute the work they've been doing for the last many months and um, just got to get it, got to do it. Nice. You're so fast too. Hey, you want to just put a shout out for your book? Do you have a copy? Here? Oh, I do. Thank you. Yes. My cookbook came out this past year in May and it's called the plant-based for life cookbook. And thank you, chef AJ for a beautiful endorsement on the back. And my cookbook is all plant-based of course, and oil-free and sugar-free and has over a hundred recipes. Everything has its own a uh, photograph and lots of desserts because I love desserts, lots of soups and stews and burgers and salads and lots of breakfasts and really, really good um, solid recipes that you'll be able to make again and again. And my, I call it deliciously simple recipes to nourish, comfort, energize, and renew plant-based for life cookbook. You can find yeah. it on my website, which is annarborvegankitchen.com. And it is a fabulous book. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy these days? <laughs> um, our, well, I have been working on these recipes for our bundle and um, starting to develop additional content for my blog and uh, getting a chance to talk to people like you. In fact, that's been one of the fun things about the bundle as well is having a chance to meet all of these other collaborators um, in the bundle. It's amazing, all the doctors and other chefs and dietitians and fitness experts. And it's really an incredible combination of people. Absolutely. Uh, Carol says, I ordered her book last week and it's arriving Monday. I can't wait. And she ordered it. Thank you, Carol. And Mona wants to know if, if it's at Barnes and Noble. It's available online through Barnes and Noble. I'm not sure it's in the stores, um, but I know it's available online. Right. Well, you are so fast. You know, I don't ever have to worry about you going over. Let me tell you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, thank yeah, you. So beans five ways. We've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you could do dessert, black bean brownies, but I probably wouldn't put the Definitely. onion. Not the onion. Without the onion. I agree. Uh, and the garlic. Well, fantastic. So guys, we don't care who you get the bundle from. Just get the bundle and here's your chance to get it from Vicki. Um, is the book available in stores or only on your website? It's available on Amazon, Kathy, for sure. Right, Vicki? That's correct. It's definitely available online everywhere. And it's also available. I know in the Ann Arbor area, it's available through Book Suite and through the Kitchen Loft, two stores that are um, lovely supporters um, of my book in town. And I know in Washington, D.C., if you email me, I got a, a, a comment from a store that's carrying it in Washington, D.C., and I want to say the name of it, but I can't remember for positive, you know, to I'm not sure of the name. So send me a note and I'll be happy to tell you where that is, if that's close to you. But otherwise, online for sure, Amazon and, um, and other online retailers. Or wherever fine books are sold. No, just <laughs> that's right. And definitely on my website, you can find the link as well. Is this a question or a comment, Colette? Is it okay to eat white rice exclamation? I say, yeah, I eat it. It's my favorite. Yeah, I say it's fine too. I tend to eat brown and black rice. I like it, but I make white rice every week for my husband who prefers it. So we have a mixture of rices always available and whatever you like, whatever you'll eat is, you know, it's kind of like 
uh, isn't it Dr. Greger who says whatever, what's the best vegetable, whatever one you'll eat. And so, yeah, just eat, love, eat good food. Love me some white rice. That's the thing. Like all these people are going raw and I'm like, and there's no white rice. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Huh. All right. Well, this was great, Vicki. Always a pleasure catching up with you. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Chef AJ. Lovely to be with you. You're the best. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in about 27 minutes for Food Addiction Fridays with Dr. Joe Nifflin. Then I finally get a short break. And then at 2 p.m., we have Drs. Rick and Dr. Carrie.